Hi, my name is Nikola Markovic and today I will be showing you how to use the IoT Connect NRF SDK on a Nordic Thingy 91. The SDK can be found at github.com slash avnet dash IoT Connect. You will find it in the pin section. And at the main page, you will find the readme MD file and make sure to cover and read through this file just in case anything has changed since the time of recording of this video. The SDK also supports the development kit for 9160 and the AVT 9152 evaluation board. You should pay attention to the releases compatibility matrix and make an informed decision on which combination of software and modem firmware you want to be using for your board depending on the SIP module hardware revision. To get started, you should first download the NRF Connect for desktop application for your operating system. Once you've downloaded and installed that application, you will see a menu of other applications that you will want to install on your system. In our case, we want to install the LTE Link Monitor, the Programmer, and the Toolchain Manager in case you're using Windows. If you're not using Windows or if Toolchain is Manager is not supported for your operating system, you will want to be using the Getting Started Assistant, which has a interactive instructions for your OS on how to install the actual NRF SDK. So if you are using Windows and the Toolchain Manager is your choice, then you will see a menu of the NRF Connect SDKs that you want to use. As you remember on this page, we had different versions of NRF SDKs that are matching to the software release that we will be downloading. Going back to this tool, you will want to install the appropriate version in the appropriate in, in any directory where you want to install it. And I already pre-installed the SDK 1.6.1, but I'll just show you how that menu looks like on the 7.0. So you will want to potentially change the directory and place it where you will want to install the SDK on your operating system. Once you've downloaded and installed the NRF SDK, you will need to patch it. There's specific instructions there on the actual readme and what you need to do is actually browse to where you installed the NRF SDK and I installed it in NCS v1.6.1 and you need to navigate to Zephyr, lib, libc, new lib, there's a file libc hooks that you will want to edit and at the bottom of the file, you will see the get time of day function. You need to declare that function as un underscore underscore week. At this point, the Nordic SDK and tool should be set up and we should be able to go ahead and download the actual IoT Connect SDK. You will pick the actual SDK that you want to use for your board and I would recommend the latest version if you can. So uh, you will download the IoT Connect NRF SDK the specific version sources that zip. I've already downloaded and expanded this zip in my IoT Connect NRF SDK folder. So uh, at this point, we should be able to open the project with Sager Embedded Studio. Uh, in a toolchain manager, you will open the Sager Embedded Studio project. And at some point, you will be prompted with this license agreement. Uh, I will just accept it because this is for educational purposes, but keep in mind that Sager Embedded Studio license is free for commercial use for any NRF 9160 chips. So you can click to obtain license and follow the instructions from here. Go to file, open NRF Connect SDK project. In the project section, navigate to the directory where you expanded the IoT Connect SDK. Go to samples, ITC sensors GPS, and select that folder. The board name will be Tingy91, NRF9160 NS. Click OK. Some of these operations, like menu transitions and builds, take a long time, so you will see me often skip uh, the video to save you some time. At this point, we want to be configuring the project by going to Project, Configure, NRF SDK Project, and Menu Config. 
uh, this menu config takes a while and while this is loading i will show you how to actually uh, set up the iot connect account to uh, be doing that in IoT Connect sample, we will need the company ID, environment, and the device name that you will be using. So these items you can get from IoT Connect website by going to settings, key vault, and CPID will be found on that page, and you can copy it, paste it into the company ID field. Um, our environment will be QA, so we'll enter that. And uh, I'll choose a name for the device. I will call it NREP demo. And say configure. This step also takes a while, so going back to the web page we will navigate to devices device and click the i icon on top and templates we will need to create a template for our uh, demo in our case i've already set up a template because that takes a while um, and i will just show you what you need to do so we want to have a version field which is called string which is of type string uh, we want to have cpu which is a number and all of these from here on will be numbers so you want environment sensor temperature humidity and pressure light sensor red green and blue and the motion sensors x y and z we want to be using in our case a self-signed certificate when creating the template so we will go back to devices and create a new device based on that same template. We'll call it NRF demo. I pick the default entity and we want to use the NRF demo template. You will click the certificate icon to generate a certificate. Ensure that you don't have a password set here. So we will go and uh, click the generate button. You will get a client certificate and the private key. You also want to be uh, setting up a, uh, a CA certificate, but not this one that you're getting on this page. On the modem, we will use the Baltimore CyberTrust root certificate. So uh, you can just Google for it, Baltimore CyberTrust root certificate, and make sure that you hit the uh, DigiCert website for that and uh, from here you can go to the details page now we have the three certificates that we will be using in the next step to configure the mode this is the baltimore certificate and uh, at our uh, device page we will need the client certificate and private key so now what we can do is close the enter connect toolchain manager and open the lt link monitor what we want to do is connect our device via USB cable to our PC and turn it on. You can ignore this prompt here. Select the device. Go to the certificate manager page. And on this tab, we want to copy this ATC font equals 4 command and paste it into the terminal. once that's okay we can go back to this page of the tab and copy the baltimore root certificate in place of the ca certificate including the begin and end lines go back to the device page copy the client certificate paste it into this section and in the private key entry box we do the same We want to enter 10701 for the security tag and update certificates. Once you see the certificate upload completed, your device is ready to load the software on it. We're going to close the LTE link monitor for now.
and I will go back to the build. Um, in our project, we want to say build Zephyr merge hex. I would recommend to use the plain output here. And one more thing that we also want to do is don't forget to click OK on this page and click Save to save your device. You also want to click this Release button to make sure that you acquire the device. Once the build is complete, we want to flash the firmware. We want to start with the device powered off and hold this button on top. Turn on the device while the USB cable is connected, of course. We hold the button for about five seconds or so, just let it boot and release the button. So the device should be now in MCU boot mode. And at this point, we can use the programmer application to flash our firmware that we just built over the USB cable. We're going to select our device, say add hex file, and browse to where we expanded the SDK, go into samples. Sensors GPS built thing in 81. And in the Zephyr folder, there should be app sign hex. You want to open that file, scroll down, and say write. This operation takes a while, but uh, another thing I wanted to cover since we're at that page, you see at the bottom here there is update modem button. If you need to update your modem's firmware, this is also the same tool that you use and you do the same thing. You put it into MCU boot mode and boot up with it. Once the flashing completes, you should see this message where it says that the uh, upload completed successfully within a minute or so. We're here good to go and go with, forward to the demo. For the actual demo, I made a small modification to the software where I increased the interval of how frequently the data is being sent from five second back off to one second back off. So uh, we should be seeing the data come in live pretty much every second or so into the IoT Connect device page at live data tab. And also we should see the same thing in LTE link monitor. I've also made a dashboard page which should show the values a little bit more clearly. The humidity now is about 50%. Uh, the pressure is about 98% of one bar, I guess. Uh, temperature is close to 31, 32 Celsius, but I'm thinking that probably includes the board temperature itself. Uh, the light is predominantly green, but you cannot see that very well on the camera. So uh, the LS green has the highest value. The board is light flat, so you see the negative 9.8 meters per second approximately showing in the Z uh, axis. And if we were to turn the board this way, it should sort of show the X value increase to about 10 meters per second. And similarly, if we were to turn it upright this way, the Y value should go into about negative 10. This is all for the demo. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.